The reception to the newest Brigade Type 20 has been a mixed bag to say the least, at least amongst us watch collectors. And I would even say that I've heard more negativity surrounding this watch than I've heard positivity or excitement about it. Collectors are complaining about a number of things. They're complaining about the date. They're complaining about its placement, the Swiss made designation location, the loom color, the lack of a fluted case, the case diameter, the list goes on. Some are even going as far uh, to say that this is too Breitling Avi-esque or stating that if they want this type of look, they are going to go buy a Longines Avigation Big Eye and save about $15,000. So when you get down to it, I think most criticisms of this watch are valid. Watch collectors are the most enthusiastic and generally knowledgeable of any brand's consumer base. We, and I, you know, I do include myself in this grouping, we are very opinionated and in large part creatures of habit. So elements or designs that are new or that don't match our own preconceived notions of what should be, they are generally rejected and sometimes in a very persnickety way, at least initially. So I would like to deviate from the main conversation surrounding this release from the Swatch Group and focus in on the watch. I want to help answer a couple questions. How good is this? How is the quality? How are the details? And I will leave the subjective areas about design or design choices up to my very capable viewers. So before we jump into the details, let me first shout out Exquisite Timepieces. They're an excellent family-owned brick and mortar authorized dealer in Naples, Florida, and they graciously lent this brand new Type 20, this new release in for review. So if you are shopping any Breguet or any watch that they carry, I highly recommend them and a link will be in the description of the video. Now let's start with my favorite aspect about this watch and that is the gorgeous and sophisticated movement. This is the Caliber 728. It is an automatic winding, high beat, flyback chronograph with a column wheel, a vertical clutch, and a silicon hairspring. It is highly accurate and highly anti-magnetic. Breguet developed a new pusher system that will enable the pushers to really need the same amount of force in order to actuate or to start and stop the chronograph. The movement has a free sprung balance, a full balance bridge. It has ceramic rotor bearings and a blackout skeletonized 18 karat gold rotor. The movement displays spiral finishing, purling, and black polishing. The column wheel is also blacked out. The synthetic rubies really become the only elements that bring any color to this caliber. So not only is the movement technically sophisticated with being a true high beat featuring a flyback column wheel chronograph, but it is beautifully executed. And in my opinion, this is the most attractive element of the new Type 20. Now let's flip this watch around and take a look at the dial on a macro level. And this is where the military inspiration comes to the front. It is rather stark. It is rather utilitarian. There are no areas of finesse or applied markers, polishing, or really anything of the sort. The elapsed minute register is enlarged and it will cut into the two and the four Arabic markers on the dial, though I do enjoy the wide loomed hand in this larger sub register. And I will also note that the indexing here is partially loomed. The watch really looks awesome in low light scenarios. The loom is potent and lasts a decent amount of time. I like the chronograph seconds hand, how it has just a long thin strip of loom as opposed to the more traditional circle of loom near the end tip. Overall, I think the dial does a very nice job of displaying the vintage military design inspiration, though I will say I would not look to this watch if you crave upscale dial elements. Now let's go to the case. The case is beveled. I like that shape and it is very well finished. The rotating bezel is an all polish finish, which does fit nicely with the history of this model. Note the relative thinness or width compared to the large or dominant dial. I do enjoy the open sixes and open nines. Uh, as far as the index work and the polished bezel goes, you're not going to find that style of font on the dial. Now let's go to the tactile elements. The bezel is very grippy. It's easy to use. The positions are crisp 
and the bezel does go in both directions. I don't see any back play present here. The function pushers are nice and loud, like I mentioned earlier. The amount of pressure needed to engage or actuate the pushers, they will be equal between these two pushers. So uh, from just a collector perspective, I find this satisfying. Now, lastly, I will mention the strap. The leather has a good tone, a good texture, a good color to it. The contrast stitching matches the aged look of the old radium loom on the dial very nicely. The leather strap does have the easy to use quick release system and the buckle is likewise very well executed. It is signed and it does not feel out of place with this watch, which I think is a nice thing. It's refreshing because oftentimes on a luxury watch strap, the buckle just seems to be an afterthought and I'm happy to say that that's just not the case in this instance. But overall, let me summarize here. Uh, when you hold one of these new Type 20s in person, you should clearly be able to notice a couple of the things that stood out to me. The case finishing, very good. The tactile action on the bezel and the movement pushers are exactly what you expect to see in a high-end luxury flyback chronograph. The movement becomes the star of the show. It is technically impressive and so well executed. This is my favorite aspect of the watch. And lastly, the watch has a very good presence in person. It really feels nice on wrist. It feels proportional. And for reference, my wrist is 7.25 inches in circumference. Now, when it comes to any potential negative elements, I think, you know, this is fairly subjective but the dial feels rather austere. I recognize it's supposed to be vintage inspired, but to me, it just doesn't stand out in terms of the details and the execution. And I don't want to sound too cranky or too persnickety, but this, uh, it just appears to be at about the same level as an Avigation Big Eye from Longines, though this is the only element of the watch that feels that way. Everything else is top level. Now, I'd like to know what you think. Do you like the new release? Do you miss the distinctive elements of the prior generation, like the fluted case, the lack of a date, the dive style bezel, or other elements that are not at play here with the new Type 20? Did Breguet miss the mark? Or are watch collectors just being too reactionary, too persnickety, or too picky? Is this a wise release after all? Let me know your reasoning in the comment section. And again, a big thank you to Exquisite Timepieces for sending this brand new Type 20 in for presentation. If you are shopping any Breguet, they really are a fantastic Breguet authorized dealer. Links will be in the description of the video. Now, lastly, I would just appreciate if you could like this video if you found it helpful. And please subscribe for more varied horological content. Thank you.